Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever Digital Revolution Awards. Thank you so much for joining us to celebrate cloud excellence. My name is Maxine Wineri and I am the founder and CEO of The Future Is Greater. I'm an entrepreneur, author, speaker and your host for the Digital Revolution Awards tonight. The Digital Revolution Awards were founded to shine a light on outstanding performances from across the cloud industry. The innovation, collaboration, and hard work that is helping the world achieve so much more through technology. 2020 was quite a difficult year for all of us, but it will certainly have been so much more challenging were it not for the incredible work of those in the cloud technology field. Over the past year, cloud products and services of all shapes and sizes have helped us adapt to new ways of working, connecting and living our lives. That's why we feel like now is the perfect time to acknowledge and applaud the people and organizations driving cloud technology forward. Over the course of this digital ceremony, we'll reveal the winners across 18 awards categories and hear from a few special guests along the way. Of course, this is not your typical award ceremony. In different circumstances, we would have invited you all to celebrate together in person. Hopefully, we'll be able to do that at next year's awards. But in the meantime, we'd love for you to join together virtually and share how you are celebrating the Digital Revolution Awards at home. Throughout the evening, we'll be running a competition over on Twitter. So snap a photo of yourself partying at home, post it and tag in the Digital Revolution Awards. The best submission will receive a hamper of luxury goodies, or you can donate the value of that hamper to St. Martin's fundraiser. Before we get to the all important unveiling of our winners, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the fantastic support we've enjoyed from our judges and sponsors. All the nominees you'll hear about tonight have been meticulously discussed and deliberated by a panel of independent judges, all of whom are experts in their fields. Thank you to Simon Maskery, Senior Global Trailhead Partner, Manager at Salesforce. Amanda Slate, AWS Consultant Partner Lead at AWS. Dr. Evaristus Mainzer, General Manager at IBM Hybrid Cloud and Edge Ecosystem at IBM. Gillian Lamella, Strategy Engineering Delivery Lead, Corporate and Investment Banking at Barclays. Sanjay Gidwani, COO at Capado. Anna Brailsford, CEO at Code First Girls. Tia Dubroisson, President of Data Transformation at Bell Fleur. Tonya Edwards, VP of Delivery at AMA at PulseSource. Sasha Thompson, CEO and founder at The Equity Equation. Jeannie Cuff, Associate Director at Americas at ISG. Nima Bakhtiari, President and CEO at Arbella Technologies. Siobhan Nicholson, Client Technical Leader at IBM. Pamela Mead, VP of Global Design at SumUp. John Zamonek, Managing Partner at Align Technology Group. Dudu Zile Jele, Senior Technology Business Analyst at Aviva. Emma Jones, Founder and CEO at Project F. Mike Dickerson, CEO at Click Dimensions. Alina Timofeeva, Senior Manager at KPMG UK. Dr. Joanne Rewcastle, Head of Internal Digital Group and Cross-Government Engagement at DWP Digital. Ian Gotts, CEO at Elements.Cloud. Amber Takahashi, founder at Brown Girl Tech World. Chris Howell, Business Development Public Cloud at Fortinet. Alam Fardad, CEO at Migrant Leaders. Henning Heesh, CEO at Entero AG. Ellie Barrett, Alliances Director at Natabox. Terry W. Phelps Jr., Senior Vice President at Local Government Federal Credit Union. Aaron Rees, Founder and Managing Director at Ribura. Nabila Salem, President at Revlant. Zoe Morris, President at Frank Recruitment Group. And our moderator, Daljit Bamford, Chief Customer Officer at 10th Revolution Group. Thank you all for volunteering your time and expertise to help us celebrate cloud excellence. We're so incredibly grateful for the support of our sponsors. 
It's an honor to partner with so many leading innovative organizations that are as passionate about the cloud industry as we are. Many of our sponsors are doing important work to make the cloud industry a place where everyone can build a career, break barriers, and make a difference. To find out more, Nabila Salem of Revelant caught up with Gillian Lamella about her work with the Barclays Women in Tech Initiative. Hi, my name is Nabila Salem, president at Revelant Group, and I'm here with Gillian Lamella, engineering delivery lead in corporate and investment banking technology at Barclays. She is also co-founder of the Barclays Women in Tech Network, and we will be talking about diversity and leadership in the tech space. Hi, Gillian. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Nabila, for the introduction, and thank you so much for having me here today. Absolutely. So let's start talking about your work with the Barclays Women in Tech Europe Network. You co-founded this network and created a global community of women who empower and support each other as they develop their careers in the tech space. So what key lessons have you learned from working with others in this network? So our Barclays Women in Tech Network, it aims to empower women at all levels of the organization and backgrounds to achieve their career aspirations in STEM. Um, we focus exposing our colleagues and communities to various networking, upskilling, collaboration, and leadership opportunities at Barclays Technology. And we do this really proudly through a series of global initiatives and sponsorships. I'm really proud of the work that we've done in 2020. Um, we continue to drive our mission. We supported our colleagues in the really difficult work from home environments, as well as our local communities. We supported uh, tech conferences and launched uh, several digital campaigns, such as Careers in Tech, uh, our Ada Lovelace, which is our annual anniversary for Barclays Women in Technology Europe. We supported um, women in tech conferences such as Grace Hopper, Code First Girls, We Are Tech Women, and the World Series Online Festival that was um, later in the year. And we ex extended our network to what used to be a few hundred to 15,000 uh, members across 20 chapters worldwide. So for us, we, if anything, we rise to the occasion of really embracing technology in 2020. Well, that's fantastic, Gillian. Um, it's great to hear all the stuff that you guys are doing. And more specifically, what can business leaders do to help the next generation, in your opinion, of female technologists thrive? This is a really important to topic for me, um, having started uh, my career in technology at the age of 10. So I'll be one of the first to attest the importance of really helping the next generation uh, of technologists have an early start. Um, at Barclays, um, what we've done is help to sponsor various organizations that focus on that future technologist. So for example, we sponsored events with uh, Teens in AI who helped underrepresented communities from ages 11 to 19 learn about um, artificial intelligence, machine learning concepts, design-led thinking, innovation, uh, how, to, how to do um, uh, programming through a series of hackathons and innovation challenges we support throughout the year. And we also have partnered with uh, big tech companies such as Adobe and, and Google in terms of uh, partnering for future events in 2021 around Creative Jams and I Am a Remarkable Series, which we're gonna be launching for International Women's Day. Um, so I think, you know, as business leaders, uh, the more focus we put into the future, the next generation of technologists is the more output we'll receive and the, the more likelihood that we'll be able to really make a difference in diversity. Are there any women in tech right now that you find particularly inspiring? Yes, I definitely do. And there's tons to pick from. Um, I think the one that stands out the most for me is, is hands down, it's Anne Bowden <laughs> from Starling Bank. I think she is, um, you know, way ahead of her time and someone that I, I, I look up to. I think what she's done in Starling is, is, is fantastic. And, you know, I think that is a proper mindset that everyone should have going forward in terms of being disruptive, making a positive change in tech. 
Um, I also wanted to add another, um, you know, another role model that I look up to, which is, you know, not necessarily women in tech, but I would say a male ally of tech, and that's Elon Musk. From, can't really go wrong with that one. <laughs> <laughs> what one piece of advice would you give to any women considering a career in tech? I would give a few bits of advice to any women considering a career in tech. I'd say number one, you have to drive your career. Um, not just driving your career and your targets, but your pace for success. Um, you should also be curious to learn, right? If you're interested in learning about a new emerging technology, don't be too worried that you may not have a formal uh, computer science engineering background. Learn, and that's the, that's the best thing you can do. And thirdly, I would say, don't be afraid to take risks. You have to take risks if you want to succeed. Um, you know, the best opportunities I've had throughout my career were the ones where I learned from others um, experience, their, what they've done well, what they maybe failed at, could have done better. And then from there, I define my destination and my means of travel. No risk, no reward, as they say. Well, I think that's great. And thank you so much, Gillian, for speaking to us and sharing your experience. We wish you all the best with the fantastic work you're doing with Barclays. And thank you once again for helping us celebrate excellence in the cloud. Thanks, Nabila. So now it's time to reveal who our judges have selected as the winners for the Digital Revolution Awards 2021. The Business Pioneer of the Year commends a cloud partner or ISV organization that has developed and launched the most groundbreaking new cloud product or service. This award recognizes excellence in pushing the boundaries of what cloud technology is capable of. Our Business Pioneer of the Year will be an organization that has created and deployed a revolutionary trailblazing product with real potential to deliver change. Let's take a look at the finalists. I'm now going to hand you over to the Vice President of Global Design at SumUp, Pamela Mead, to reveal this year's winner. The winner of the SumUp Business Pioneer of the Year Award is... Trian's Concerto.Cloud Platform. Congratulations. With its new integrated cloud and infrastructure operations management platform, Trians provides enterprises with a unified, holistic view of their IT operations. Concerta.cloud is revolutionizing infrastructure management and responding to the growing need for unified oversight in an age where businesses are operating a multitude of next-gen ISV solutions. Congratulations to Trians, and a special mention also goes to Capgemini, who were also highly commended in this award category. Massive thanks again to SumUp for sponsoring our Business Pioneer of the Year Award. The Techstar of the Year Award recognizes outstanding contributions to the cloud industry by an individual, a cloud expert whose creativity, passion, and innovation is driving the space forward, someone who truly embodies cloud excellence. Our finalists are professionals who have an exceptional commitment to knowledge sharing, to using their influence in the cloud space to make a difference, and to creating new pathways to the future of the cloud industry. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to the founder of Brown Girl Tech World, Amber Takahashi, to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Brown Girl Tech World Tech Star Award is Chaitra Badurapali. An author, speaker, and leader, 
Chaitra Vadulapali is the president and co-founder of Women in Cloud, a community-led economic development initiative that is driving global conversations with the United Nations and tech corporations to ensure an inclusive technology industry and economy. The judging panel would also like to acknowledge Amanda Beard Nielsen, who was highly commended. Congratulations to Chaitra and thank you, Brown Girl Tech World, for sponsoring our Tech Star of the Year Award. Our winning CEO will be someone who has led their business to demonstrable growth whose integrity and decision-making prowess has positively impacted customers or employees, or who is leading their organization from the front and taking bold, innovative steps into the future. Let's take a look at our finalists. Now over to Gillian Lamella, Strategy Engineering Delivery Lead, Corporate and Investment Banking at Barclays to reveal this year's winner. Winner of the Barclays Women in Tech Outstanding Leadership Award CEO is Will Saville, CEO of Unily. Will co-founded Unily in 2006 and has led the company to become a globally recognized brand in the SharePoint marketplace. Last year, Will not only designed, produced, and distributed 3D printed visors to the NHS and other organizations, but he also supplied his employees with 3D printers so they could scale up production. At the same time, Will and his team were also steering the business through the ongoing pandemic and a huge spike in demand. In 2020, Unily saw sales rise by 30%, and the team still found the time to make and supply over 3,000 masks to hospitals, hospices, and ambulance services across the UK. Phenomenal. Congratulations, Will, and thank you, Barclays Women in Technology Europe, for sponsoring our Outstanding Leadership Award CEO. So 2020 was a difficult year in so many ways, but the challenges we faced were met head on with pioneering tech innovators stepping up to help us weather these unprecedented circumstances. As we welcome in a new year, we asked our judges about the tech that wowed them and buoy them in 2020. For me, the best use of innovation in 2020 was actually the use of virtual assistants. So for, for example, in the hospitals or in any healthcare organization, they provided that frontline support to answer those repeated queries and questions at any time that came through and they provided valuable time to staff to, to focus on those more complex issues that they really needed to during the pandemic. The most impressive I saw was um, a cloud software called Sirena. Um, this is a cloud-based workforce management system and uh, we were actually involved in setting this up for a vaccination center. It took us just a few days to set this up. When you look back at what has happened a few years ago, it would have taken ton tons of time to install servers, et cetera, et cetera. And this was just by, so this was very impressive. Those collaboration tools like Zoom, Teams, all the new advantages that came there that, that have helped me kind of, um, I guess, adapt to our home lifestyle now. I'm used to traveling around the world. Even if I take it away from work for a second, uh, the other side of this wall, uh, my partner has basically become a teacher. If I go back to when lockdown first happened, honestly, it, it was painful. It was, please do this mass, please do this. There was no way of getting in contact with them. They've given them access to, say, tools that weren't better. They can chat to the teachers, they can submit, they can receive work. All of that stuff I spoke about now is so easy. It's not the click of a button. Hats off to Amazon Web Services. 2020 was quite an anomalous year, I think, for all of us. I think the data didn't really stack up with anything we've ever seen in our history. So being able to 
utilize and leverage, um, especially things like QuickSight, tools like Amazon, uh, Data Brew. You needed real time uh, kind of data last year because things were just changing so rapidly. Uh, staying at the forefront of that data story uh, really helped us out. So a piece of cloud tech that's really helped me personally in the last year has been video conferencing. It was absolutely critical. It's helped me keep in touch with my three kids. It's helped me connect with my friends through Zoom cocktail evenings. It's even helped me keep in touch with my mother who has dementia and is in a care home. So video conferencing really has made a difference to keep those connections alive, help me, help my well-being. Now to reveal our next award winner. This award recognizes a CTO whose innovation and leadership has made a significant impact on their company's product or service offering. Our winning CTO will have made strides to develop and engineer improved solutions that help customers achieve more. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Aaron Rees, Founder and Managing Director at Rebura to reveal this year's winner. The Rebura Outstanding Leadership Award CTO goes to Hannah Wolf. Anna Wolf is a CTO and co-founder at Ghost, an open source non-profit publishing platform. Hannah has shown outstanding leadership and innovation in her role and has made a significant impact not only on Ghost, but on the lives of those independent creators who were empowered by the use of this platform. Launched in 2013, Ghost remains inherently open source and everything Hannah and Ghost does is in the sole interest of building the best product, supporting sustainable journalism publishing and more open web. This was another tough one, so we'd like to note that Deborah Danielson was also highly commended. Congratulations to Hannah and thank you, Rebura, for sponsoring our Rebura Outstanding Leadership Award, CTO. Our winning CIO is someone who has led on a substantial digital transformation that is delivering tangible results for their business executing a successful implementation or major project that's helping their company improve their processes and enabling them to lead by example in the cloud space. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Ian Gott, CEO of Elements.Cloud to reveal this year's winner. So the winner of the Elements.Cloud Outstanding Leadership Award for the CIO goes to... Gertrude Van Horn. Gertrude's outstanding recent work includes overseeing two huge and impactful implementation projects at NCH Corporation, rolling out Oracle across 36 countries, and launching Salesforce on force.com using NCH's own proprietary software. Delivering these projects has enabled the company to focus on processes that have empowered the entire business. Despite her expertise as a tech leader, Gertrude's focus is always on people and fostering a true team atmosphere where trust is paramount. Congratulations to Gertrude Van Horn and thank you to Elements.Cloud for sponsoring our Outstanding Leadership Award CIO. And now a quick word from Salesforce. And now a mini meditation. Inhale serenity. Exhale, whatever's happening here. Now bring your focus back to your customer, Tom. Tom. Salesforce Customer 360 helps you focus with a single view of your customer, like Tom. Oh. 
All right, let's reveal the winner of our next award. The Tech for Good Awards seeks to recognize organizations or individuals who are using the power of cloud technology to make the world a better place, solving problems, transforming lives for the better, and driving positive change. Let's meet our incredible finalists. Now over to Migrant Leader CEO, Elam Fardad, to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Migrant Leaders Tech for Good Award is the Polaris Project. Polaris is a non-profit, non-governmental organization that works to fight and prevent modern day slavery and human trafficking. Polaris analyzed more than 32,000 cases of human trafficking documented between December 2007 and December 2016 through the National Human Trafficking Hotline. Through this data, Polaris was able to release the typology of modern slavery, a report helping people identify instances of trafficking and modern slavery. The organization continues to make its data sets available to other groups committed to combating trafficking. Congratulations to the Polaris Project and a special mention also goes to tech moms who were also highly commended. Thank you migrant leaders for sponsoring our Tech for Good Award. This award celebrates businesses in the cloud industry who are making tangible, effective efforts to promote inclusivity, foster diversity, and champion equality within their organization. Our finalists have all implemented impactful policies and initiatives which support access to opportunities in the cloud space for all. Let's meet our nominees. Now over to President at Revelant, Nabila Salem, to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Diversity and Inclusion Employer of the Year Business Award goes to American Express. American Express values and embraces the diversity of thought, backgrounds and experiences of all its employees. Through its employee network scheme, Amex is helping employees broaden their associations with other employees while expanding their knowledge of the business. Some of these networks include Asian Network at Amex, Women in Technology, Black Engagement Network, Disability Awareness Network, Millennials Network, and the Veterans Network, to name just a few. Congratulations to American Express and thank you, Revelant, for sponsoring our Diversity and Inclusion Employer of the Year Business Award. Our Diversity and Inclusion Employer of the Year Partner Award acknowledges cloud vendor partner organizations who are taking impactful steps toward creating a diverse and inclusive culture. Those partners whose values, behaviors, and initiatives go above and beyond to foster greater diversity, eliminate bias, and contribute to equity. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Mike Dickerson, CEO at Click Dimensions to reveal this year's winner. The winner of the Click Dimensions Diversity and Inclusion Employer of the Year Partner Award goes to Bauerhaus Digital. Founded 
hosted by Meg Quinn and Brian Dobson, Bauhaus Digital is home to a team of almost 40 Salesforce Marketing Cloud professionals. Through their core values of inclusiveness and a focus on developing great cultural understanding of what makes a great team member, Bauhaus Digital built a cloud tech consultancy with nearly 50-50 gender split, zero gender pay gap, and zero turnover. Simply incredible. Congratulations to Bauhaus Digital and thank you to Click Dimensions for sponsoring our Diversity and Inclusion Employer of the Year Partner Award. Creating an inclusive space where cloud professionals from all walks of life can thrive is crucial to the continued success of the tech industry. With diversity and inclusion high on the priority list for so many businesses in 2021, our judges shared some insight into how organizations can get it right. The one piece of advice I would give to any organization looking to foster better DNI in 2021 is to not be held back by barriers or things that they are worried about doing because they're not quite sure that they can. Any small activity will help. Find the people who want to talk about DNI. Find the people who want to tell their story. Um, find the people who can help them to do that, whether it's joining up with a communications team to help um, people to blog, to be on video, to talk about it on social media, to bring those DNI policies to life inside and outside of the organization. Really think about how diversity, equity, and inclusion can impact the entire company. This is not something that needs to be housed in HR or one part of the business. It should be a part of the company's DNA. So how does diversity, equity, and inclusion show up in accounting or marketing? Um, how does it impact not just your employees, but your customers, right? The communities that you serve. And so really looking at it as a deep down part of who the company is. How does it tie back to the values? How does it tie back to the mission of the company? Not window dressing. You know, avoiding the, the tendency to focus too heavily on branding, on making things appear good on the outside, because that's what, you know, becomes this kind of lip service, if you like, that we've all come to know and hate um, in the diversity and inclusion space. And that's what leads to diversity fatigue. So we need to kind of cut that out and focus on the real problems. I think DNI needs to be looked at through a strategic lens and companies need to be prepared to make themselves accountable for delivering on it. So making a comprehensive assessment of where you are as an organization and what policies you need to incorporate. I like to think of these policies holistically and I call them the four E's. So um, engagement, entry, experience as well as excelling in an organization and i think if companies assess where they are in these areas and invest in these they will make a marked difference in their dni they need to start reaching out to uh, organizations educational organizations at a younger age to bring them into the company make a, a program that specifically selects diversity, uh, women, people of color, and bring them aboard. Uh, one of the companies I was really impressed with in the Digital uh, Revolution Awards was Bauer House Digital. They actually analyzed the data. They're looking at the data and saying, where are we not meeting these goals? And I think that would be a lesson to any tech company. Personally, I think American Express is really leading the way right now. And I think one of the focuses that I'm particularly impressed with is how they support working parents. The parents represent a huge segment of the workforce today, but they're often an untapped resource. American Express recognised this a long time ago, I think, you know, well before COVID brought this issue to the forefront. You know, they've demonstrated that they can retain talent by showing a little compassion and fostering a workplace where parents are empowered to be productive and successful, but not at the expense of their personal lives. And I really hope to see more companies following Amex's footsteps when it comes to addressing diversity and inclusion and also parental policies going forward. Now it's time to unveil our next award winner. This 
This award recognizes a significant transaction that has the potential to positively impact the cloud ecosystem, notable for creating new partnerships, coalescing resources, or injecting funds into innovative cloud businesses. Over to Dr. Evaristus Mainsa, General Manager at IBM Hybrid Cloud and Edge Ecosystem to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the IBM Cloud Technology Deal of the Year Award is Adobe Acquires Workfront. This award honors the vendor that has deployed a pioneering and beneficial cloud product, one that pushes the boundaries of what's possible in the world of cloud technology, delivers value to customers, and helps users achieve more. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Sanjay Gidwani, COO at Copado, to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Copado Cloud Technology Product of the Year Award is Threat Modeler. Modeler is an automated threat modeling solution that secures and scales enterprise software and cloud development lifecycle. In 2020, the company launched its AWS Security EPI CS automated offering, developed to automate and accelerate the design of secure AWS cloud environments, a critical tool at a time when more businesses are making the move to cloud. Huge congratulations to Threat Modeler, and thank you so much to Copado for sponsoring our Cloud Technology Product of the Year Award. The mission of the Digital Revolution Awards isn't just to shine a light on the work of today's cloud innovators. We're also dedicated to paving the way for the next generation. That's why we're raising funds to support St. Martin's School in Kenya, so they can continue empowering students to build brighter futures. What makes a great leader? They see things the rest of us can't. They inspire others to go on a journey with them. They overcome the barriers that stand in their way. And they never lose sight of their goal. But how do you create a great leader? It's not about where they're born or who they know, where they went to school or the jobs they had. The leaders of tomorrow are everywhere in every corner of our beautiful world, waiting to change it, to shape it into a new reality that we can all benefit from. We need to help those leaders of tomorrow, to give them the opportunity to succeed, to seek them out and lift them up, because no one is born to be a great leader, but they can be taught to be one. If you'd like to find out more about St. Martin's and how you can support this incredible life-changing work, visit our website. Thank you. Now, let's find out who will be crowned the winner of our next award. The cloud ecosystem is developing at breakneck speed. This award showcases a cloud service provider that has recently experienced outstanding growth, either of its customer base, revenue, or its workforce. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Zoe Morris from Frank Recruitment Group to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Frank Recruitment Group Fast Growth Cloud Business of the Year goes to eCloud Valley. eCloud 
Valley launched in 2014 and obtained AWS Managed Service Partner status in its first two years. Since its inception, eCloud Valley has attained more than 500 AWS certifications and served more than 1,000 customers. In 2019, eCloud Valley's cloud services revenue reached 85 million US dollars, accounting for nearly 40% of its consolidated revenue. The company's recent success earned it a place on the Financial Times Top 10 High Growth Companies, the only Asia-Pacific company to do so in early 2020. Huge congratulations to eCloud Valley and thank you, Frank Recruitment Group, for sponsoring our Fast Growth Cloud Business of the Year Award. This award celebrates excellence in digital transformation through cloud technology. Our winner will be an organization that has delivered a highly effective transformation for a customer, delivering cost benefits, improving processes, or generation of new business. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Ellie Barrett from Natterbox to reveal this year's winner. The winner of the Natterbox Digital Transformation Project of the Year Award is the Mailer Corporation for its Main Street Digital Initiative. Main Street Digital is helping local businesses access and exploit digital transformation through a single economic development platform using cloud and AI technologies. The solution is already helping businesses in Kirkland, Washington fast track their economic recovery through Shop Local Kirkland, a hyper-local digital marketplace housing more than 270 storefronts on a virtual high street and connecting businesses to customers. Mailer aims to replicate this model to various cities in Washington state to ignite economic recovery. Congratulations to Mailer and thank you to Natterbox for sponsoring our Digital Transformation Project of the Year Award. As cloud technology continues to break barriers and help us achieve more, the future of the industry is looking more exciting than ever. We asked our judges what cloud trends they expect to see emerging in the coming months. I think right now that the trend that I continue to see is more of an adoption of that public private that hybrid cloud approach to what uh, folks are trying to do. You know, we're looking at an industry, at least in financial services, is how to improve uh, our productivity, how to improve the ability to enhance technology and deliver it to our consumers, in, in our case, members. And, and I think we will continue to see a drive towards cloud so that, that that uptime, that performance, that capacity, capability is there, which has not necessarily always been capable in an on-prem model. One, one particular trend that I'd like to see more uh, in cloud is cybersecurity. I, I think it's going to be very instrumental to how we deliver services to our consumers. How can we offload some of the, the tools and stuff that we need that are in the cloud that have an overwatch of everything that we're doing, not just in an on-prem, uh, aspect, but in support of our, our consumers and members and, and giving them, you know, a sense of understanding that their data and, and their money is obviously dear to us. The privacy, you know, aspects of it is all being covered. So I'm very interested in watching how, you know, security in the cloud is covered. I believe that the most prominent cloud trend in 2021 will be that cloud will be everywhere. If you look at COVID, uh, cloud has really helped accelerate working at home and in particular supported the businesses with the operational resilience. Now in 2021, businesses may move from just paddling in the cloud to actually immersing in the cloud. And I would see it across all the sectors. In particular, it could be the government who perhaps is not using cloud that much right now, but is looking to scale up in foreseeable future. One of the potentially impactful cloud trends, which I want to see more and more emerging in the future, is the fact that cloud is no longer just a technology change, but it actually impacts the business innovation. And what I want to see more and more is the technical teams not so much working in silos, but actually working with the business stakeholders uh, across the organization, helping with the specific use cases aimed at the customers, at the providers, 
and also at the suppliers. And now it's back to the awards. This special category seeks to recognize an organization that has responded to the ongoing health crisis by adapting its services or products. A business that has risen to the challenges presented by a global pandemic and pivoted in the way it operates or how it delivers for the wider public good. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Aaron Rees of Rebura to reveal this year's winner. The Rebura Rapid Business Innovation Champion Award goes to Inksmith Canadian Shield. When COVID-19 pandemic hit Ontario, EdTech organization Inksmith launched the Canadian Shield to address the shortage of PPE. The company quickly grew to meet demand, developing a face shield that could be produced and manufactured at scale using existing resources and capabilities. The company now employs over 300 people and produces 200,000 shields a day, not only helping to solve the PPE shortage problem, but reinvigorating the local manufacturing sector with full-time living wage jobs. Congratulations to Inksmith and thanks to Rebura for sponsoring our Rapid Business Innovation Champion Award. This award goes to the businesses that are leading on diversity and inclusivity in the cloud industry from the very top. Those whose board membership truly reflects the depth and breadth of our society. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to CEO of Code First Girls, Anna Brailsford, to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Code First Girls Most Diverse and Inclusive Board of the Year Award is... Verizon. Verizon's commitment to DNI is evident in its US workforce. 59.3% of employees and half of its board members are women or people of color. Alongside a diverse workforce, Verizon are also committed to creating a diverse supply chain, spending $5.8 billion in goods and services with diverse suppliers, including minority, women, veteran, service disabled veterans, LGBT and disability owned businesses in 2019 alone. We'd also like to give a special mention to Drift, who were highly commended by the judging panel. Huge congratulations to Verizon and thank you to Code First Girls for sponsoring our most diverse and inclusive Board of the Year Award. This award recognizes exceptional contributions to the cloud space by thought leaders in cloud innovation whose achievements are advancements that are shaping the Microsoft cloud industry, enabling, inspiring and empowering cloud users and businesses of every shape and size to accomplish more. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Nima Bakhtiari to reveal this year's winner. The winner of the Arbello Technologies Outstanding Contribution to the Microsoft Ecosystem Award is Barhead. Using the Microsoft Power Platform, Microsoft partner Barhead Solutions developed a solution to help automate YMCA's Victoria's application process for the Australian government's JobKeeper program. Developed in just two days, the solution ensured over 5,000 staff were paid their wages that month. 
Congratulations to Barhead and special commendations to Concurrency and Akari Solutions. Thank you, Arbella Technologies, for sponsoring our outstanding contribution to the Microsoft Ecosystem Award. Talent is a vital part of the cloud industry's continued success. Earlier, Daljit Bamford, Chief Customer Officer, and James Lloyd Townshend, Chairman and CEO at awards organizer 10th Revolution Group, got together to talk about the importance of diverse leadership and why it's more vital than ever to celebrate success. So James, it's great to be here with you today. So we're here to talk about a few things today that are top of mind. I have spent a lot of time in my career working with the boards of all sorts of companies in all sorts of industries and of all sizes. And without doubt, the board that you have built is one of the most diverse boards. Four women, three ethnic minorities and one Irishman. If you were in a cohort of 20 peers right now and we were sat around a table, what advice would you give them? on how to actually start moving the needle. People recruit people like themselves, it's the halo effect, and, and people are inherently biased. Whatever you kind of think about it sensibly, so if you take, ignore how you've been brought up, take everything behind you, you know, and just think sensibly for a moment and go, how do I make my company as successful as I possibly can do? How can you possibly achieve that, that aim by having people with similar views and opinions to you sat around a table? How are you ever going to be innovative? How are you ever going to think of different things? How are new challenges, new opportunities going to come to you if everyone's from the same backgrounds and thinking the same things? I always sort of say, I say to people like age, you know, if we walk out on the streets and we see the society that we live around us um, and you walk into your office and it doesn't look like the society that, you, the, 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 you know, the roads you've just walked off, you've got a problem. But you're right, it's a very, very interesting disjoint. So what's next for you in the, in the diversity space? And we've got a brilliant opportunity with Revelant, which is some of the stuff people in Revelant is just, they are amazing. Mm -hmm. One of the ladies who's blind in the US, who was one of the stars, we've given her an opportunity to really get into the Salesforce ecosystem and be brilliant. The more we can get people to buy into it and go and realize it and not do it because somebody, it looks great on a report. It's do it, live it, breathe it, walk the walk. All right, so let's go on to the Digital Revolution Awards. Fantastic initiative. Why now? Why have we decided to, to launch our inaugural Digital Revolution Awards now? Well, for many reasons, but the, the major reason really is there's so many brilliant things that's happened. Well, let's shout about them, right? Let's, let's shout about it. Let's find out all the different organizations, different people who've done brilliant things, right? And let's tell people about it. Yeah. The rewards just give the opportunity to pat people on the back and go, wow, and show other people that they can do the things that these great companies have done and these great people have achieved. It's, so it's a chance just to give everyone a bit of a, right, come on, let's get stuck in here. Yeah. So James, it's been great talking to you today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dom. Now it's time to reveal the winner of our next award. Our outstanding contribution to the AWS Ecosystem Award recognizes exceptional contributions to the cloud space by AWS consulting and technology partners, ISVs, training providers, or any other organization or individual working in or supporting the AWS community. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to managing partner at Align Technology Group, John Zemanek, to reveal this year's winner. The Align Technology Group outstanding contribution to the AWS ecosystem goes to Vicky Seno. An education leader, speaker, and event organizer, Vicky Seno is paving the way for women in the cloud space by helping others upskill and learn more about subjects like containers, serverless, 
networking and security. Dedicated to creating more learning opportunities for those looking to learn more about AWS, Vicky has developed an AWS Cloud Computing College degree, has trained staff from countless colleges, and leads coding courses for those looking to break into the industry. Huge congratulations to Vicky, and also special mentions must go to Corey Quinn and Lynn Langit. Thank you so much to Align Technology Group for sponsoring our outstanding contribution to the AWS Ecosystem Award. Our outstanding contribution to the Salesforce Ecosystem Award celebrates those who have contributed to the advancement of the Salesforce ecosystem through publication, education, innovation, or active involvement with the global Salesforce community. Let's meet our finalists. Now over to Tonya Edwards, VP of Delivery at PollSource to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the PollSource Outstanding Contribution to the Salesforce Ecosystem Award goes to Gemma Blazard, the Architect Club. In the midst of last year's economic turmoil, Salesforce MVP Gemma decided to share with others what she already knew, that Salesforce could help people develop rewarding new careers. And so Gemma created a series of YouTube tutorials every week for 28 weeks, aiming to teach people all about Salesforce and offering people who had been furloughed or lost jobs access to expert-led Salesforce training for free. Participants in the course have gone on to be named Salesforce champions, gained certifications, and started on new career paths in the Salesforce ecosystem. Congratulations to Gemma, and thank you to PulseSource for sponsoring our outstanding contribution to the Salesforce Ecosystem Award. Our Excellence in Learning and Development Award acknowledges an organization that has demonstrated its commitment to cultivating cloud skills and that has achieved results that help further the development of the industry. The winning organization will be able to showcase how its approach to learning and development is yielding results and contributing to the collective upskilling of the cloud workforce. Let's meet our finalists. Now back to Nabila Salem, president at Revelant, to reveal this year's winner. And the winner of the Revelant Excellence in Learning and Development Award goes to Salesforce Trailhead. Trailhead's accessible, bite-sized, and gamified upskilling community has inspired a learning movement within the tech space. At a time when tech skills are in high demand and the cloud space presents enormous career opportunities, Trailhead is democratizing learning and empowering more budding technologists to break into the Salesforce space. Congratulations to Salesforce Trailhead, and thank you, Revelant, for sponsoring our Excellence in Learning and Development Award. Massive congratulations to all our winners and finalists. The nominations we received for these awards were outstanding and humbling. It is so exciting to see the innovative and impactful work being done by businesses and individuals from all across the cloud industry. Thank you so much for joining us to celebrate cloud excellence and a special thank you to everyone who supported this event, our judges, sponsors, our behind the scenes team, and everyone who contributed to making the awards a reality. We appreciate your support and we hope you enjoyed joining us on this journey. Of course, the great work doesn't stop and so neither do we. We'll be setting the wheels in motion for the Digital Revolution Awards 2022 in the coming months. So keep an eye out on our social media channels for updates and keep your ear to the ground for more outstanding performances that deserve to be recognized. And don't forget to show us your own at-home celebrations of this evening on Twitter. 
Thank you so much for watching and take care.